Hello and welcome. This is Joy, Pink Girl Teaches, and I want to thank you for pressing play and allowing me to be part of your day. To all the new subscribers, welcome to the family and to the rest of the family. Hey guys, it's great to be here with you. I hope that you are all taking care of yourself. As you can see, today I am going to be talking to you about or answering the question, why the narcissist downgrades. Well, first of all, they are a narcissist and they don't know what's good for them, so they will downgrade anyway. But before we get into the video real quickly, for everybody who is not following Harrier over the top or just say no to narcs, I encourage you to check out those channels. We decided that we were going to partner together so that we could better serve you. We want to be able to ensure that we bring you the very best quality as far as coaching services and just making sure that you are okay. Like, look, we're family and family takes care of one another. One thing about being a victim of this type of abuse, it doesn't just come from intimate partners, you know, parents. There are so many out here who are talking or who say, in the comments all the time that the narcissist is their parents and they turn their siblings against them. And so you feel alone. Some of you have been married to the narcissist and you can't get out of the relationship because everybody tells you God hates divorce. And so you stay, but you, you're miserable and you don't have the support of somebody who really understands where you are. There are so many scenarios I could go on forever, but I won't. <laughs> we came together so that we can offer you a variety of services to speak to your overall wellness. It doesn't matter what your background is, what your ex what you, what level or how far into the process you are. You could still be with a narcissist. We still have stuff for you too. So one of the things that we're working on is a retreat. Now we would have loved to have it this year, but it's not safe because of COVID. So we are we're looking towards next year or next spring, should I say, so that we can host this retreat. We want to get to know you up close and personal because after all, we're family and this is the reunion. So look out for more information about that, as well as several other opportunities that we are creating so that we can get on a one-on-one -on -one basis with you so that we can sit down and really see each other and talk. So look out for this information. We are all excited about this. So let's get back to this raggedy person, the narcissist. Do you know, do you ever look back in your relationship and wonder how, how the narcissist could have such a long relationship? Because sometimes they have partners that they claim are their exes who they were with for 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, however many years they've been together. And you're wondering, well, the narc always said that this person was mean, that they were evil, that they were the manipulator, that, you know, they did all these terrible things. The narcissist calls them everything under the sun except their name as or, yeah, they call them everything under the sun except the child of God and their government name. But here they are. Post it up on social media. You found out because you looked. You found out because the narc sent you a link. You found out because of the flying monkeys. It doesn't matter how you find out in this instance, but you're aware and you're confused. Like, why are they with this person? They say they were evil. All of that, right? Here's the thing. When the narcissist does this, it may not be the case for every instance. But you do find that a lot of the times when they go back to their forever supply, it's because birds of a feather flock together. That's right. This is really about what happens when two narcissists get together. It happens. They get together. Think about it. They love the same things. They manufacture drama. So there's always that environment of, of confusion and chaos. They're competitive. The narcissist does things to win. They want to be the one to drive the nail in the coffin, both of them. They do a lot of tit for tat. So here's an example. You, you know, this is where we find that a narcissistic injury is issued and we're not even aware of it simply because we did not compliment a new pair of shoes, didn't compliment a new purse, and they're mad. And so in their sick, twisted, demented minds, they want to get you back. And you know, these guys do not mind 
getting down in the dirt and fighting like the gutter rats that they are. And that excites them, you know? And so when two people who are like that get together, guess what? Guess who is happy? Both of those narcs. That's right. They are happy because they feed off one another. After a certain amount of time, we are sick of it because we're not driven by the desire to be around drama. We want peace, serenity, love, unity, joy in our lives. And they cannot relate to those things. And so that's why they go back to their ex. That's why they go back to their narcissistic ex. Birds of a feather flock together. You know, when we think about our relationships and the things that attracted us to the narcissist, they bring excitement into situations, so they add that flavor. And um, they're spontaneous as well as very, very charming. And so they'll feed off of each other in those ways. You do find that where the narcissist is grandiose, which is most of them or a lot of them, their other their partner may not be like that because they are they have they mask that deep seated feeling of inadequacy, so they want to give their attention to somebody. So they feed off of each other a few different ways. But please know that two narcissists together can last because they, whether verbally or non verbally, work out an agreement. One, they establish a pecking order, right? So you may have the dominant narc and then you have the submissive narc. They make it work. Another way that they do this is they they establish different areas where they are each dominant. So one may be in control of the home. The other one is in charge of their business. That's just an example. So they find a way to make it balance. And so, you know... Another thing that makes it work for them is, you know, we, that grand ego again. So if you combine two grandiose egos together, guess what you have? You have a super ego, you know, just like we have the super empath. They have the super ego together and they function perfectly in that regard, especially if they are both highly functioning narcissists, because what they do is they'll take that projection out onto the world and wreck or wreak a lot of havoc. So think about two high functioning narcissistic parents. Let's say they are both driven by business or whatever, and they are really good at, you know, their careers or whatever they choose to do. Yet as parents, they project all of their filth and junk onto their children and they tag team together for that. Remember, that's a super ego that they possess. So don't ever question yourself or belittle yourself or feel like you're not good enough because they went back to their exes. It's not really about that. So here's the thing. Like I said, they thrive off of each other, but they each thrive off of, you know, getting new sources of supply so that when they cheat, they don't care. The other narc doesn't care. Like I said earlier, they do tit for tat. So you cheated on me, I'm going to cheat on you and I'm going to get a better supply because they do make each other aware sometimes or, you know, they're sloppy and they, they, they may act like they don't want you to know, but they'll let each other know so that they can triangulate and make their, their partner feel less than, you know? And so it's madness. So that's where you find that they will even show pictures of you. They will show them, tell that their narcissistic partner, everything wonderful about you. And so that, you know, triggers the other, the other narc in the relationship to go out and get some supply so that they can do the same thing. It's a lot of drama. So please don't ever, ever, ever for one moment think that you're missing out on anything you gain by not being with these type of people. And don't think about it as a relationship that is established in love. It is established in toxicity at its highest form. It is not even a relationship. We can't even call it a situationship. This is a transactionship because that's all it is. It's about a transaction. They feed off one another. So it's easy for them to disrespect each other because they disrespect people all the time. And then, you know, they continue to take this to different levels of disrespect because number one, they don't respect themselves. And number two, that's just what they do. You know, they hit below the belt between each other and don't really apologize. And the very things that we are asking them to apologize, they're not, their partner is not because in their minds, they're just going to be like, okay, I see what you did. I'll get you back. And that's exactly what it's going to be. So 
you know, I just wanted to come here and, and encourage you, you know, sometimes we, we face conflict in relationships and we work towards conflict resolution. The narcissist will fight their narc partner. That's why you were boring because you, you wanted to talk things through. Baby, let's go to therapy so that we can save what we have. And they're like, mm, your time is up because I'm not doing that. There's nothing wrong with me. Everything is you. And they'll project that onto you and go back to that, you know, to their crazy ex. So really, it's not even about you a lot of the times and you find that, you know, they offer each other what they need. So one may bring wealth, the other one will be attractive. And that's what the, you know, so they have that balance. And I really just wanted to talk to you about this because I, I find a lot of comments that speak to, that speak to, you know, this type of hurt because they left you for their ex and they've been with that ex for so many years and you are confused like why? And let me tell you, you know, I like to be transparent and share my story with you so that I can, you know, really express why I feel these this way or, you know, just be transparent just so I can share because we're all learning from one another. It happened to me like this, like I was wondering, why would you go back to this person? You've been with them for like 25 years, but like we were good. They said all these, you, you complained about them in so many ways. That's exactly why they go back to their narcissistic partner because they know that they're not leaving each other. Once you find out who they are, they know you're going to leave. It's just a matter of time or they get bored of you quickly. You don't bring the drama. You don't have the flavor that they need. Don't look at this as a bad thing. This is a fact that you need to celebrate. You don't want to be appealing to the narcissist at all, at all. And so, you know, when when they when they do project or when they do triangulate, either through flying monkeys or themselves, it's not about you. It's absolutely got nothing to do with you. They are just with the person who best suits them. They don't deserve you. They never did and they never will. And you won't go anywhere in life if you are with one of these destiny suckers. So, yeah, I just wanted to come here and share this with you really quickly tonight. And if you, if anything that I said resonates with you, I invite you, I encourage you to press subscribe, turn on the notifications, like, comment, and share. And I will be chatting with you in the comments section. If if you have not already, just a friendly reminder, check out Just Say No to Narcs as well as Hario Over the Top. So family, until next time, take care of yourself and take care of each other.